tell, PR is really all about storytelling. It, um, from the pictures to recipes to your packages and your events, uh, this is a great time to capture public attention and to uh, get some white space for your B&B. So what is your fall story? Is it all about fall colors? Maybe not. Uh, maybe it's about Halloween. We're going to talk about a whole lot of ideas for promoting your B&B to the news media during the fall. The first thing we're going to talk about, obviously, for fall are fall colors. And as you can see, fall colors don't always have to be leaves. You can have uh, pumpkins by the water. You can have hot air balloons. You can have uh, walks down uh, beautiful um, uh, lanes or uh, scenes along the water. And of course, foliage surrounding your B&B. Um, there's so many ways to capitalize on the fall colors of fall of autumn. So, as, as you can imagine, during fall, photos rain. A fabulous photo will obviously go a long way. So keep your camera with you to capture perfect fall shots. Both of these fall shots were taken in Mount Washington Valley in New Hampshire by a, a professional photographer who keeps his camera with him all the time. And this one on the right, he just happened to be uh, next to this beautiful lake in Eaton, New Hampshire, um, at the perfect time to capture the haze on the water. And this photo has actually put little tiny Eaton, New Hampshire on the map because it's been used so many times. So I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, what if the leaves don't turn where I live? Uh, and that's the case in, in, in a lot of uh, the country. But fall, as you can imagine, is, the most, is a colorful time of year anywhere in the United States. This photo right here was taken from Florida. I love this colorful photo with the flamingos and the pumpkins right next to them. This photo here could be taken in anywhere USA. And of course, if you've got a mascot and a pumpkin, that's really a great way to uh, capitalize on fall colors. And certainly, if your uh, fall foliage around you isn't uh, changing, perhaps your decor is where you find the fall colors. In fact, here's an inn, uh, the inn at um, uh, Harbor Hill Marina, which is on the Connecticut shore, where fall foliage comes really late. and it's not probably not well known for the turning leaves there. So how did they capitalize on fall colors? Look at this photo that they took of their porch. This photo has been used over and over again and has really put this B and B on, on the map. And it doesn't include necessarily any turning leaves, but but the colors, but it certainly features the colors of fall in pumpkins and moms and flowers and all the other decor. So, what, so we're going to go over a whole bunch of different ideas of ways that you can capture media attention during the fall. The first one I have here is to send photos of fall gardenings to any of the gardening contacts at your local newspapers or websites or um, even, you know, radio stations because everyone has a blog these days. All three of these photos came from B&Bs. All three of these photos were taken uh, at B&Bs that don't necessarily feature fall foliage colors, but um, certainly feature gorgeous gardens and allowed them to capture media attention for the fall colors that are uh, not just on the trees, but in their gardens too. In California's wine country, fall means harvest time, and that offers some great story ideas. Here's a great, you know, wine making during the fall harvest is a great story idea that anybody in, in California's wine country might want to try and, and pitch to the media. So how do you get the media to pick up your photos and stories? You're probably wondering that right now. So let's talk a little bit about that timeline and um, the steps it takes to uh, go from an idea to getting it into the hands of the media. The first thing you need to do is capture a compelling photo or create a great story. But really, in order to get the attention of the media, you really need a, a cool photo. The, here's two examples right here of, of photos that I think are colorful, fall-like, and uh, really tell a story just by looking at them. Um, this one, 
could easily be about um, how you know how to create fall centerpieces uh, from your uh, favorite innkeeper. And this one is another one that would feature all sorts of different DIY ideas for creating fall decor. So first, capture you know create your idea, capture a photo of it, and then brainstorm a list of five or ten media outlets that might be interested in their story. It doesn't have to go to more than five or ten. It just has to get into the right hands to be able to, um, uh, you know, to find somebody who would be interested in that story. You'll take your photo and you'll email it with a caption or, you know, about a paragraph to two paragraph long pitch of your story. And, um, and then you'll follow up with the people that are on your media list. Um, so, you know, those five to 10 people that you think might be interested. After you've done that, make sure that you post the photo and the story to Facebook, to Twitter, to Instagram, to Pinterest, to all of those places where uh, the media may be following you. And finally, create a blog posting from your story and your pitch. You know, it, it, let, it, let it do some work for yourself. So the next thing you're thinking is, well, how do I find those media contacts? How do I find the people that I want to pitch? And, and really, you know what you do? You find them one at a time. You come up with your list of five. It doesn't have to be more than five or 10. And you go to those websites um, and you look for those contact names. If you're wanting to pitch to the gardening uh, or a lifestyle editor at USA Today, you'll go to USA Today, you'll click on contacts, or in some cases it's staff, sometimes you find it under the About Us tab, um, sometimes it's under News Team for the um, TV stations, and then you find the right person and, e and their email address is almost always there. Often not only their email addresses, but their Twitter handles and all other social media um, um, ID, IDs also. So you can do that first. And that's what I often do because I'm looking for very, you know, often looking for very specific um, people to pitch a story to. Another way to find media contacts is to ask your Chamber of Commerce for their media list. A lot of times they've got one and if they don't have one, definitely your state's Office of Tourism will have one and can hook you up with their PR agency to perhaps give you some great feedback and ideas um, on, on how you can share your story. And in fact, tell your Chamber of Commerce your story, tell your Office of Tourism your story because they're out there talking to the media all the time. And then uh, for those media that you really want to reach, find their social handles and follow them. So let's look at a couple case examples. Here's a great story from the West Hill House B&B in Vermont. For a couple years, they used to do what they call a, a leak raving special, not uh, not leaf raking, but leak raving. And in fact, they would um, challenge uh, guests to come and stay at a discounted rate. And for, for every day that they would rake three, for three hours or more, they would give 50% off. Um, and this was such a win-win for the uh, West Hill House because they would, one, uh, be able to attract people during kind of a, a, a very slow season after the fall foliage season and after all the leaves had dropped. Two, they were able to get their leaves raked, which was great. And three, the media liked this story. There were a number of, of uh, articles that appeared about leak raving in Vermont. There's a great video that uh, you'll be able to find at the West Hill House uh, B&B or, or write down this address and click on this. Um, the Red Chair is another great example of a story of uh, storytelling through photos. Uh, I'm sure most of you are probably, oh, sorry. Most of you are probably familiar with the uh, red chair story. Um, it started with this photo of the red chair on a little, um, on, a, on a beautiful um, ice skating rink. And it went from there. There was so much interest in that one photo that in fact, uh, uh, it, it, other innkeepers in Cape Cod, which is where the red, red chair is from, wanted to take photos of it too. From Cape Cod, it traveled through the uh, New England, and then it just started going across the country, and now it's on its way back, actually being sponsored by bedandbreakfast.com. I thought this fall photo of the red chair was such a cool photo, and it's a perfect example of how 
um, one photo can tell a wonderful story. And of course, as you can see, the news media loves the story of the red chair. There have been countless stories where the red chair appeared in studios or on the front page of a paper. The red chair has really become a celebrity for the B&B &B industry. So that's, you know, that, that's a little bit uh, about how to reach out to media. But I also want to tell you that when it comes to fall, don't, do not underestimate the value of meteorologists. Meteorologists are, you know, really the um, the least um, pitched media because people don't expect them to want your, you know, want to hear your story, but in fact, they really do. So what you'll want to do is to send photos to of uh, your fall foliage um, um, stories, whether it be your DIY. Um, crafts or your decor or um, the fall, the turning leaves in your backyard. Ta so send them, uh, send your pictures to meteorologists via email or and then post them on social media and tag some of your key meteorologists. After that, just look for mentions on air the next day because they really, really love them. One thing that's important when it, when it comes to meteorologists, though, they want photos within the past 24 hours. And they love photos that have anything to do with weather or nature-oriented uh, themes. As, as you can see, you know, a meteorologist would have a field day talking about these clouds and this incredible sunrise, once again, taking place at the Inn at Harbor Hill Marina. So these are the kind of things that, you know, you, you, you don't think of meteorologists at first, but in fact, they are a great place to send fall foliage photos with your name and your contact information because they will mention on air where the photo took place. A photo like this might end up taking uh, like uh, receiving at least a minute or more of banter back and forth between the meteorologists and the uh, anchors and it'll all be about you and your b, &B and how gorgeous it is there. So again, uh, be sure that after you've sent your photos to meteorologists and to the media that you put it on uh, your, all your social media um, outlets with hashtags that are things like fall foliage, uh, hashtag foliage Vermont or uh, foliage Ohio, foliage Cal Colorado, whatever, you know, wherever you are because an amazing photo can always go viral. So the moving on. What's another theme? Haunted. If you're haunted, flaunted, I tell innkeepers during Halloween. Uh, everybody is talking about haunted hotels, haunted inns during uh, Halloween time. As a matter of fact, I've already answered a number of different media requests for information about haunted inns. Uh, the media love covering haunted hotels during this time. And it's a great way to get your name out there. Here's the Travel Channel article. Here's a Daily Meal article. Uh, articles appear and stories appear on Good Morning America, on the Today Show, you name it. You're going to see uh, stories about haunted hotels and B&Bs uh, during the holiday or during the Halloween period. Now, I know a lot of innkeepers don't want to talk about being haunted because they think that it's going to be a turnoff, but I tell people that there are as many uh, travelers who want, who want to sleep with a ghost as there are that don't want to experience ghosts. It's, it's becoming much more of a, a traveler interest to be able to experience uh, haunted hotels and haunted inns. So be sure to, you know, to, to tell your story if you have one. But what are some of your other Halloween stories? Well, you can talk about your Halloween packages, Halloween events, decorating ideas, some of your traditions and costumes. Here is a picture of a Halloween wedding that I took from a B&B. &B. Can you imagine how great that is? I can see this picture appearing on the Today Show when they go into their orange room and they talk about amazing photos and who, and they would name not only the photo, but where it was taken and their for you'd have how many millions of eyeballs hearing and, and ears hearing about your in and B&B? A lot. So it's a great way to uh, capture publicity with uh, around the Halloween time. 
October is International B&B Month. Uh, Bedandbreakfast.com sponsors this International B&B Month and uses hashtags in love and saving your stay as a tagline. So what? So part, let's participate in this. It's a, it's an like maybe a love to talk about Dairy Month, uh, Chocolate Month, International B&B Month. What are some ideas? How about posting some beautiful pictures of your B&B and use hashtag in love? Um, include that tagline, savor your stay, in your posts and in your references and in your blogs. And by the way, create a blog. How about a blog in, of a day in the life of an innkeeper to show everything you do for guests, to give people insight into what you do. And what about contacting the media during International B&B Month and let them shadow you, see what a, a day in the life of an innkeeper is like and, and let them tie into International B&B Month story. I think it's a great lifestyle story and a lot of TV, I, can, I think it's geared toward TV and lifestyle, um, uh, lifestyle media that would love a story like this. During... Um, International B&B Month, use it as a time to offer a prize for Wheel of Fortune. B&B uh, Month was kicked off by B&B Week on Wheel of Fortune, which happened last week. Some of you probably saw that. Um, and it, it featured B, a B&B set and gave great visibility to bed and breakfasts and the innkeeping business and also featured uh, prizes from bedandbreakfast.com. It's a great idea for um, publicity to feature your in as a prize for Wheel of Fortune. So all you have to do is offer a minimum of a five-day stay, including meals and activities, and you will be considered f uh, for a prize. Um, not not all not all prizes are accepted, and sometimes it takes a few you know years to be able to get on there because there's quite a waiting list. But so your commitment is a five day stay, including meals and activities, which you can always partner with somebody else in your town. You don't need to cover transportation costs, but you do need to have a minimum of 60 seconds of video footage, not videos produced by photos, but high quality HD video footage. That, that's a necessity that uh, Wheel of Fortune um, uh, insists on. I, uh, when, I, when we first, when BedandBreakfast.com first started working with Wheel of Fortune, it was me who worked with uh, Promotions Consideration Inc. And they used to tell me, we don't need pictures. The palm trees need to sway in the wind. And that's, that really kind of hit home with me. Okay, now I get it. It has to be real video footage. So what happens if you become a prize on Wheel of Fortune? Well, there's an 11 million average viewership. Seeing your b, &B seeing your uh, hearing about how wonderful it is there, seeing the video footage of your, of your inner B&B. 28 million viewers tune in per week. It's the number one show in television. Um, it, and, um, Interestingly enough, the demographic is a very close match to that person who's the B&B enthusiast, both millennials and older travelers. It's viewed in 209 markets covering 99% of the United States. So contact Janice Hurley at, um, at bedandbreakfast.com and her address is below here if you're interested in participating as a prize for Wheel of Fortune and she'll take it from there. Okay, fall fall means Halloween, it means fall colors, it also means Veterans Day. And it then Veterans Day means B and Vs for Vets. This is the tenth year of the B and Vs for Vets program and it's a big year, I think, for coverage. In fact, this program is already getting some good coverage. Um, working with CBS radio, we're working with um, Travel Pulse, a uh, travel website, and uh, we, we've got interest from a number of other places this year on the B&Bs for Vets program. But it's a great way for you to get some local coverage or even, um, as you can see here, NBC News coverage, um, Washington Post coverage, uh, or Concord Monitor, local, local newspaper coverage. 
participate in B&Bs for Vets and tell the media about it. In fact, invite them over. Invite somebody from your local TV station, one of the anchors, or, or perhaps the editor of the local newspaper to come and have breakfast with you and the vets and, and to hear from them what it means to be uh, able to stay at a B&B &B on Veterans Day. They love feel-good ideas. You know, Veterans Day, Halloween is one that's easy to find stories about, but Veterans Day is not. So uh, this is a wonderful, uh, you know, feel-good story, and it's a great way for you to get your um, your your name out there uh, as a, as a as a wonderful member of the community and one who um, isn't you know is is uh, in favor and you know accepting of military and um, and and just a great community member. So here's some other ideas for things that you can offer, story ideas that you can offer to the media. How about some of these DIY projects? Here's one that I got from the Captain's House Inn just recently. It's a great uh, idea that's so, so simple. You take a couple vases, you fill them with green apples. You could even do green and red at Christmas maybe. And then you put dried hydrangea on top. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, but look how cool that is. Isn't that pretty? Here's one where you hollow out a pumpkin. I've seen a lot of these different kinds of stories about uh, great fall centerpieces, great fall wreath ideas. These are all from inns and B&Bs um, around the country, and you can offer up your DIY stories too. Recipes, recipes uh, for food editors or even on um, TV shows. Uh, I live in the Portland, Maine area and there's a show that, you know, an evening uh, show, new or lifestyle show called 207 in Boston. It's, it's Chronicle Magazine or Chronicle. And they're often doing demonstrations from chefs about great restaurant or great recipes from, from different restaurants in the area. But often, you know, they're looking for new and different ideas and innkeepers could talk about any of their fall uh, food ideas and better yet some breakfast ideas because, you know, a lot of times those shows don't feature breakfast ideas, but the, um, the producers are always looking for something a little bit different. And since breakfast is half your name, it's a great way to get your story out there and uh, talk about your fabulous breakfasts. So yeah, I loved this idea. These are all, again, pictures from Inns and B&Bs of Howling Halloween Fair. Here's one I love. These are breadsticks, as you can, might be able to see, with roasted peppers on the ends and almonds as the fingernails. And they are an appetizer that was served at the Deerfield Inn in Deerfield, Mass. one year. So I think that, you know, this would make a great little story for food editors or even for um, lifestyle editors or lifestyle shows. Remember, your stories, your photos are always going to tell the story. I, I can't say that enough. Which, which of these two photos do you think sells the story better? They're both photos of gingerbread waffles. But I think this one right here, taken by an innkeeper, um, does a wonderful job of telling the story, whereas this one is just a little flatter, that's all. So let's talk about hosting travel uh, journalists and social influencers. Social influencers is the newest phenomenon in PR. Um, Bloggers, travel journalists, social influencers, they all offer you a good opportunity for garnering publicity. Um, an article is definitely more convincing than an ad and 100% and of the time is more likely to be read and believed than your ad advertising would be. So when journalists contact you, social, social influencers contact you, and it's probably happened to you in the past uh, year or so, what do you do? I get this question a lot. What do I do? It's okay to ask for information. It's okay to ask them what their intention is for your story. Ask for audience demographics or a media kit. And then review the audience. Do they match yours? If you are uh, don't accept children and they're a family blogger, then that's not a good fit for you. But if, you know, if they're a senior travel magazine and um, you, uh, you know, the majority of your audience is above 60, then 
probably they would be a good match for you. So review the audience demographics and make sure that they match yours. You also want to make sure that you take a look at that journalist's blog or their social media. Um, and do they cover travel? So often I've been getting requests from journalists that say that they want to come into a story and I go to their, uh, their blog or their website and there's no sign of any travel information on it. And I say to myself, they're looking for a free vacation. And no thanks, we're not able to offer you a room at that point. But if they are, if there are a lot of stories on there, and especially a lot of lodging stories, then you know that people follow them for their lodging ideas and their advice. So then that's a great match. You can talk to that journalist and ask that they do a dedicated article about your B&B or your inn and ensure that there will be significant coverage and photos. Ask them for very specific information about what their intention is for the article. So then if you have a room available, offer it. I would offer it. And if they ask for more than one room, the second room can be at a media rate. They shouldn't need more than one room. I, was, I recently worked with an innkeeper where the journalist contacted them and said she needed a second room for the photographer. Well, when they showed up, it was not the photographer. It was their best friends from down the street or neighbors or family members, I forget which. And they were really just there on a vacation. Luckily, that um, innkeeper offered uh, a complimentary room to the journalist, but not the second room. They, she might have uh, offered 10%, maybe 20% off. Um, so you don't have to give a, um, a free room, more than one free room, to anybody who asks. In some cases, the journalist cannot accept a complimentary stay, in which case you can offer them a media rate, which is traditionally 50% or so of your rack rate. So it's not too early to start promoting holiday sto stories to longer lead media. Um, longer lead media are usually magazines that are going to need at least two months to a full year ahead. You know, uh, place magazines like Yankee in New England, Southern Living, um, Sunset Magazine, they may now be working on 2019 and 2020 stories, if you can believe it. Um, but TV and radio, pitch your story within 24 hours to a week or so ahead. For the internet, you can pitch your story a week or so ahead. For newspapers, you want to pitch your story two weeks to a month ahead. When I say that, I mean, for example, gardening stories. Those gardening columnists have probably a two-week lead time because they're working on, they're working ahead. They have to uh, they have to write the column and then have it edited, and that takes time. So plan on, you know, two weeks or so ahead. For meteorologists, within 24 hours. There's nothing, there's only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about. And that's what PR is all about. So what is your pitch? Tell us, tell me your false story. Uh, let me see, or tell me your PR conundrum, your PR uh, challenges, your, you've got a story, you're not sure how to get it out. Uh, type a question into the question box and let me see if I can help you tell you how to pitch it. That was wonderful, Marty. Um, like Marty said, if you have any um, PR challenges or issues that you're working through, um, whether it be through fall or something else, um, we would love to hear from you. So feel free to type anything into that question box and we will answer them. It's kind of like a little mini game show. <laughs> And it doesn't have to be PR related. If you've got other questions that um, that I can answer about um, marketing, let me know. So we'll give everyone a couple minutes. Hopefully we get some awesome scenarios that we can have Marty crack. Anything coming in? <laughs> Not so far. Still waiting. Um, if you're 
too bashful to share your scenario too, feel free to reach out to us after um, the webinar and we can get you in contact with Marty as well. Oh wait, look, I think I have someone. Let's see. Um, okay. Ooh, we have a couple. Um, any special tips for smaller properties like West Hill House B and B, where we don't have a lot of time to work on PR? And that's coming from Peter McLaren. Oh, hi, Peter. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter. Let me think. Well, um, this again, photos. The first thing that comes to my mind. I mean, you are in an incredibly beautiful part of Vermont, and. Um, you have a camera because and I know you are a good photographer too and you're creative and you're quick with a with a photo so as many of those photos as you can grab I would take especially unusual um, fun um, gorgeous photos and don't hesitate to get them off to the meteorologists in your market and this doesn't take that long really it doesn't it's or just put them up on your social media channels and tag some of those uh, local media that you have. You know, the Burlington Free Press, the, um, you know, some of the Rutland stations, I think, might be within your market. I'm not positive on that. But um, you want to, you know, your, your photos would probably be what will drive your story. Um, and think outside the box as much as you can, which I know you're really good at, too. All right, and we have another question from the Abbott. Hold on one second. These are hard to, this box gets so tiny sometimes. Um, okay. This is from Abbott Floor, and um, they're asking, we offer an adult horse camp so newbies can get on a horse for a day. Um, they learn about horsemanship and maintaining horses. How do you suggest that they promote it? Oh, the first thing I would do is come up with a target list of five to ten places and invite them to come and experience what it's like to ride a horse. I mean, I think that's a great idea. And yeah. the story can be anything from I'm scared to death of horses. Uh, what, you know, how do I get over it? And, 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 and tell them that, you know, the experience that they'll have at, at your in your B and B is going to, is going to help that to, um, you know, uh, first timer becomes expert in a week at, at the, um, what was it? Abbott? floor b and &B. so yes. I think that's the kind of thing where the media has to experience it and I would definitely um, invite media to come um, and 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 you know it doesn't have to be it can be it can be during your shoulder season your slower season you don't have to invite them at, at the height of the season but I think that uh, journalists experiencing something like that would be the way to tell that story Perfect. Um, let's see. Oh, we got a couple more. Um, Tiffany Bertram is asking, if you host a special event, what's the best way to promote it and get those interested to book the same dates? Uh, well, I would create an event on Facebook, first of all, um, and and really talk about that, um, uh, your event on social media. I would send out a press release about it to uh, local and regional media. I would be sure to put it on my um, website, and I would also be sure to send that an, out in a newsletter. Uh, but be sure that you send it out in a newsletter probably two months ahead of schedule so people can still fit it into their their own schedule. I'd create a blog about it. I would I would really um, give it as much focused attention through social media, through blogs, through newsletters, and through your website that you possibly can. 
I've seen a lot of uh, inns. One that comes to my mind is the Grafton Inn in Vermont that does a great job with a food festival that they have. It's a once a year event. And they talk about it a lot on social media. They send out two newsletters about it. They um, they it's on their website. And it, and you know if if you have an event like that, you really want it to be focused. Um, it be a focused part of your pitch for a good two to three to four month period. Perfect. And let's see here. I don't. Um, wait a second. Um, one second, just reading through. Um, and then looks like Liz is asking, um, my chamber does not promote destination marketing and we are known um, for our summer destination and people don't think of the area in the off season. We are only a five room in, so our budget for advertising is not big enough to run our own destination marketing in the off season. Um, any tips for this scenario? Well, it means that you kind of have to create a destination for yourself. You're not going to get a lot of help from, from your um, local tourism, but perhaps I would turn to the state office of tourism and see what they're doing because they are marketing the state year round and see what kind of programs you might be able to offer them. I would create a reason to come there. I mean, whether it be a package or an event or um, something that um, you as a b, &B can offer that no one else is offering. And then I would tell that story once again through my focused um, marketing efforts of a newsletter, a blog, social media, and, uh, website, and, and try and um, tell people that there is a reason to come here during the off season that, uh, and that is something that they won't experience anywhere else but at your inn or B&B, whether it's a cooking class or a, um, or, um, a holiday event or a romantic, uh, an amazing romantic package. Um, I've seen inns do a great job of uh, creating a destination by creating something really special that no one else offers. I know I worked with one that was uh, teamed up with a bookstore that did book signings and invited some of the larger um, uh, authors to come in like Nora Rock Roberts and the inn uh, packaged with the bookstore to be able to meet the author, go to the inn, go to the uh, signing, get a signed book, uh, have a reception with that author. I mean, things like that are a little outside the box and unusual, and maybe you don't have a bookstore near you, but there might be something else that you might be able to partner with, whether it's a, a restaurant doing a special dinner or um, a museum that has some kind of a special exhibit going on. There's all sorts of ways to partner with people to create a destination uh, from your inn or B&B. And then I know you mentioned cooking classes, um, Marty. We have a question from Mark Osborne. He's asking um, any advice on cooking classes, a good size, etc. Um, so it sounds like just hosting cooking classes as a whole, not just promoting them. Any ah, great, there? great. The 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 size, the the question of size really depends upon your facility. I mean, you can go. I I have seen cooking classes that were just two people, and I have seen. I think a maximum of 12, but that was a large kitchen. 12 is probably too much. I think I would max out at eight, which would be two, four couples. Um, and I would uh, go even smaller if, if your kitchen is too small to take people on. If it is and you don't have a large kitchen, I've seen inns that do demonstrations. I know that the Brewster House Inn in, in Freeport, for example, it has a really small kitchen so what they've done is they've created a cooking demonstration program where they uh, make homemade pretzels pair them with wonderful craft bear beers and different mustards and sauces and do it all kind of as a demonstration as opposed to a cooking school but um, there's you know maybe that's a whole nother webinar we should do is about cooking yeah, that's a good idea 
because that's such a great one. I mean, I know I worked with a group of ins that did an end in in cooking school. It's fabulously popular. So, um, and there's so much interest among travelers right now in food and learning how to cook from experts. It's a great way to promote your end again, especially during off season, because uh, people really, really want to learn from experts. You as, as innkeepers are all breakfast experts. You could do a breakfast class, you know, um, and, and, and you can count on the fact that you're going to know more than anybody else in that kitchen about how to create breakfast. Maybe do a, a class uh, at the holidays on how to cook for a crowd. If anyone knows how to cook for a crowd, it's innkeepers. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, great. Well, I think that's everything. Um, thanks to everybody for participating. Again, I apologize for um, having to move this back an hour, but it looks like we still got a good amount of participants, and we will um, indeed be sharing this recording out later. Um, so thank you to Marty, obviously, as well um, for this amazing content, and it seemed um, like you had tons of helpful information and we got lots of interesting questions that might actually lend to um, new future webinars. So um, yeah, thanks everybody again and like I said, thanks for being patient. Um, we were glad to be able to bring this webinar to you today because we were all so excited about it. So glad it worked out. And if there's anybody who has any other questions that they um, don't want to talk about online, feel free to email me directly. My email is right there on the screen right now, and um, I'd be happy to talk to you. Almost after each one of these uh, webinars, we do get a few questions, so don't be shy about that. For sure. We welcome the questions, and it kind of is good, too, because a lot of times it helps us inform um, upcoming webinars. So if you have any thoughts of things that you would like to hear, um, we would love to um, hear from you on that as well, because it looks like, Marty, we have our next webinar, which is around holiday marketing, right? And mm -hmm. then after that, I think we, we need to plan out um, kind of our winter spring schedule so we would love to hear any ideas from you guys as well because obviously we want um, these webinars are for y'all so we want to make sure they're as helpful as possible um, so yeah and then um, on that note our next webinar is on Wednesday October 25th and it is on ho um, holiday marketing ideas so definitely don't want to miss that one as we go into the holiday season which I can't believe we're talking about that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All righty. Well, everyone have a great um, rest of your Tuesday, and we will talk soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Bye-bye.